This is your tech news briefing for Tuesday, September 6th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The number of severe natural disasters is rising. Eastern Kentucky is the epicenter tonight of the nation's latest extreme weather disaster. At least 16 people have died in flooding that rewrote the record books. This morning, a wildfire burning out of control in Southern California forced evacuations and led to the... That hurricane rapidly growing in size and strength, barreling through the Gulf and headed toward the U.S. tonight. In the U.S. over the last decade, we've seen six of the ten most costly Atlantic hurricanes and seven of the top ten most destructive wildfires in California. And one of the most pressing issues for local governments and first responders is how to warn people who might be in the path of destruction. Modern alert technologies have flaws and gaps, but new systems are being tested to improve them. Joining us to discuss those is our reporter, Jim Carlton. Hi, Jim. Thanks for joining me. Good to be here. So, Jim, tell me about some of the technologies we use now to get alerts and what some of their flaws are. You know, there's one called, it's kind of known as opt-in. It's where if you're a cell phone subscriber and you live in Sonoma County, then it's on you to um, check in with your local provider and check in. You know, you sign in and say, hey, if there's a wildfire, I want to be alerted. And so then when the wildfire comes, then you get the alert, but no one else does. And um, the problem with that technology is this happened in Boulder County, Colorado, just like last December. There was a wildfire that was just racing towards some communities, and the Boulder County Emergency Services only had opt-in technology. That was provided by a company called Everbridge, Inc. And basically, the people that were opted in got the alerts. The people that weren't opted in, they didn't. And there's only one-third of the people in Boulder County actually subscribed to that service, to the opt-in. So that's a problem. There's another technology that FEMA has deployed in the last few years, which um, basically you don't have to opt in. It will collect every cell phone within a cell phone tower's range. Uh, so, and it's called IPAWS. It's Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, uh, IPAWS uh, to be technical. And so they started doing this, and this is a lot better because you don't have to opt in. And even if you're passing through and there's a fire, uh, it will catch your cell phone. And so this has been deployed in places like Spokane, Washington, et cetera. Um, but it has some limitations, too. The problem with this technology is that not all phones can get those alerts. It's only once in the last few years, newer models of phones. Six out of 10 American phones can receive them. So it's going closer to solving the problem, but we're not there all the way. So it's not about wailing sirens. We're really talking about using cell phones to get emergency messages out. The problem is, though, if you're in a place where the cell phone tower has been burned down or destroyed, then you've got a problem. And that happened in the uh, campfire which destroyed Paradise, California a few years ago. I mean, we're talking a lot about phones. Obviously, we're used to getting, you know, messages over our phones, but we do spend time, you know, on the internet in other places. Are there efforts to kind of develop technologies that could alert us using some of the other means of communication? Right, exactly. There's apps. Uh, there's also apps you can sign up for. Uh, there's a FEMA alert app, which, so you're in Kansas City, you can sign up for tornado uh, learnings and alerts, and it will warn you on your computer. There's some um, leading edge stuff that um, is coming. Uh, in August, the Department of Homeland Security completed a proof of concept test on a technology that would actually send an alert directly from a satellite to the GPS navigation system of a car. So for those few times when I'm not on my phone, there is another way to get me an alert. Yes, and in fact, an even kind of more far out technology, which could be really, really useful, is to say you're at home and you're in Seattle and they have an earthquake uh, danger up there and they've got early warning, uh, you know, shake alert systems. And so say the alert goes out, there's been a 9.0 earthquake off the coast of Seattle, God forbid then the alert goes to your Alexa. There's actually some uh, work being done to maybe take Amazon's Alexa and so uh, have the alert go to Alexa and then Alexa can immediately send the alert to, for example, your garage and tell the garage door open up and then, and this is really far, and even to your Tesla or other electric vehicle and also have your self-driving car back out into the driveway. So the earthquake comes, the garage door is open, your car is out, you can get out. <laughs> That's very nascent. Um, I talked to Amazon, and they're not really doing that themselves. Uh, there's a local effort up in Seattle where there's a, a local earthquake safety advocate who's working with some companies and organizations to try to do that. But that's, 
that could be huge. I mean, we're talking about some of the the nascent technology that could help us in the future. How far along is some of this technology as, you know, wildfires and hurricanes become more extreme? Well, I mean, honestly, it is a race against time. Uh, We're being just um, hammered by climate change now. I mean, we've had the biggest hurricanes in the last 10 years, the biggest wildfires in the last 10 years. But uh, technology is going quickly, too. So I think if you look in 10 years, we'll be a lot farther along. But, I mean, you know, the problem is that these disasters keep coming, and they tend to really, the most vulnerable people are really in rural areas. Like Paradise, California, I talked to a woman who, um, she had a cell phone, and as the campfire was bearing down, uh, she didn't know because she couldn't get any alerts. The cell phone towers were down. And she looked out her window and could see like clouds of black smoke. And so she just kind of intuitively decided, we need to get out of here. And she got her elderly mother out, and they just kind of barely made it out. And that's the kind of thing we want to try to avoid. Um, And with this new technology, hopefully we can. So sum this up for us. Leave the listeners with maybe some some news they can use. If they live in a disaster zone or they're going to one, what's the best kind of tech to prepare themselves? I would say sign up for any kind of, there's a thing called a Nixel or N-I-X-E-L. You'll get a text alert that there is a brush fire. And then I would just make sure, you know, you want to have the latest model of a cell phone because that will make sure that if you're driving to, you know, from San Francisco to Reno, um, that if you're going through a place where there's a fire and you don't know about it, your cell phone is going to be picked up on the nearest tower and you're going to get an alert that, hey, turn around, you need to turn around, there's a fire up there. So I would also get the apps. Um, I have Shake Alert, which is a, a cool app I'm in San Francisco, and so we're supposed to get like, uh, you know, many seconds of warning there's an earthquake so I can go outside my house and not get crushed. The FEMA app is a great one. If you're anywhere where there might be a disaster, I would get the FEMA app for sure. You need to just kind of help protect yourself by increasing your ability to receive alerts. I talked to a woman named Jennifer Gray Thompson. She's with a, a group called After the Fire USA. They It's a nonprofit that helps towns rebuild. Um, she survived the 2017 wine country fires, which killed more than 30 people. And, you know, to this day, I mean, now, you know, at that point, she also had problems with her cell communications. She has now have, uh, you know, old-fashioned two-way radios. So with all the technology we have, you know, like a person like her, she's still living in fire country. She keeps two-way radios to alert her relatives nearby and and to get alerts. So, so as far as we've come, we're still kind of relying on some old stuff, too. All right, that's some good advice from our reporter, Jim Carlton. Thanks for joining us, Jim. You bet. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.